little sugar boogers, welcome back to the channel for a pretty exciting speed build. Today we are creating a blazing lanes for downtown Shan My Shuno. <laughs> Shan My Shuno. Bitch, I don't even know why I said it like that, but you know, we're gonna go with it and we're gonna keep on rolling because I've already tried to do this video once or twice or three times, or maybe even a dozen, I'm not gonna lie. And uh, it's kind of gotten to that point where you know what? You're just gonna get what you get and you're not gonna throw a fit. So <laughs> I'm talking about myself, not you. You can do what you gotta do, boo boo. Whatever makes your life a little bit more breezy, baby. Um, so today, yep, we're creating Blazing Lanes. If you guys watched my Gutter Family, which again is kind of revolving around this whole Bowling Night stuff pack shindig, uh, you should definitely check them out because they are kind of tied in to the history of Blazing Lanes. Now I've been wanting to get my hands on this pack and create a bowling alley since that is kind of what it's all about. And I don't have have any experience with the matter whatsoever and just building venues in general isn't your girl's forte. Um, I'm still very much, you know, in the beginning phases, I feel, of being a builder in The Sims 4 and I think I've definitely <laughs> improved um, over the course of the last few builds and to say the least, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Ah! I am so excited with the way that this bad boy turned out. I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. It's small, it's quaint, it's cozy. Um, it kind of gives you that very, like, exclusive vibe, you know? Um, and I really loved that. I wanted it to be small enough where it could fit on just about any lot that your heart imagines. I think this is a 30 by 20, maybe just a little bit bigger, maybe a 30 by 30. But either way, um, it's meant to replace the, uh, what is it called? The industrial, is it industrial building? Like, the industrial warehouse house <laughs> in downtown San Machino, or um, you could also put this in this spare uh, karaoke lot if you wanted to. It's all up to you. So um, whatever, you're, whatever you've got up your sleeve, it should fit just about any type of venue. And one thing I personally strive for is I like Max's Match content, as you guys know. <laughs> um, I really like to try as best as I can to create lots that kind of emulate EA style, um, just because I like my lots to look like they belong in the world and not necessarily say release something out of like, you know, a CC magazine where it's just thrown in and everything else just doesn't tie together. So if you see me whipping around downtown, just looking at other buildings and such, that is because I am pulling the inspiration um, and drawing it into the blazing lane. So as promised on Twitter, if you do not follow me on Twitter, you totally should. <laughs> you get to know me even more. I'm crazy. I'm, 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 I probably word vomit way too much on there. <laughs> Whoever follows me, seriously, patience, I'm a saint. But uh, it's a cool community and I think you guys should definitely do so. I have my links, as always, down below. And I did promise you guys when I was going to do my little speed build, um, I would tell you all a very unfortunate story. It's a little, it's a little deep, dark, and dramatic, but it is what it is. Um, about a time that I had a very very bad experience at a bowling alley and it has to do with my ex-boyfriend and my ex-boyfriend <laughs> so my ex ex-boyfriend his friend and a little how do you say sweet revenge against me it was terrible it was horrible so if you guys are interested in some real life drama for once and not something that's coming out of a sims playbook um stay tuned <laughs> you just gotta promise you're not gonna judge your girl but I know there's going to be a few who, who will, but that's okay. So anyways, um, living life on the wild side, here we go. Back in high school, your girl was, how do you say, um, I feel like I, I had a little Kesha vibe going on, you know, waking up, what's this? I don't even know the song. I'm not even trying, <laughs> but I was very, um, out, not outgoing. I don't know. I just, I, I lived life by the seat of my pants. I did what I wanted. It was a free spirit. Um, I wasn't a bad kid by any means. I didn't get any any legal trouble or anything. But, like, I just, I don't know. I was just, I hung out with whoever I wanted to hang out with. It didn't matter. Um, I, I don't know. I just think I was struggling to actually find myself, maybe, and where I belonged. <laughs> anyway, um, one of the things that I did as, as a teen is I was always in relationships. I'm not going to lie. But, like, long-term relationships. Not like, oh, I dated you for, like, two weeks and then I moved on. Like, there was a couple of those. But I was always a hopeless romantic. That was one thing I just, I loved having the companionship of being with someone. Um, and I think that still is very prevalent to this day because I am still with the same person that I have been with for, gosh, 11 years. And it's almost yeah 11 years almost so um I'm a, I'm a long time committer <laughs> let's just put it this way however being in long-term relationships when you're you know um 15 14 doesn't always work out but 
Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Let me go ahead and just try to, as concisely as possible, explain to you this very unfortunate, messed up situation. All right, so back when I was 14, okay, um, I was dating this guy. I was a freshman in high school. Holla at your girl, hi. And I was so excited by, you know, the the possibilities <laughs> of, of being with a guy that could drive, of being with a guy that could buy his own damn food, <laughs> being with a dude that literally had, like, the end independence that I had so craved in the past like that was very alluring to me and also he was just a really cool dude he was a very sweet guy he had a lot of friends he was very charismatic he definitely helped me get out of my shell um so I dated this guy for about nine months and then came summer of freshman year and he went off <laughs> he went off to his grandmother's house he goes uh, and I realized that after being with him for the entire school year that I was no longer in love with him like that that I no longer saw him as boyfriend material but Rather, as a really good friend, dare I say, almost like family. And a lot of you probably wouldn't see a problem with that. But I'm the kind of person that I'm just, if I'm not into you like that, I'm not in love with you like that, um, you know, I'm, I'm not going to stay with you. And I didn't want to lose our friendship. So I tried to the best of my ability to explain that to him. It was really hard. And I understand, like, I think we were each other's first true loves. And there was nothing wrong with our relationship. We just um, grew apart, I guess, which is un unfortunate. Believe it or not, I'm still friends with this guy to this day. We are, like I said, family. I've known him for, oh my God, uh, I feel like I'm going on 20 years now, seriously. And he's, he knows my mom. He knows my son. He knows my husband. He knows, and he has mutual friends too with like all of my close friends. And it's really cool. Um, and it's just one of those things where it's completely innocent and we can be friends and no sticky fingers anymore, you know? Anyway, but back when we were kind of getting over this whole deal, um, there was lots of sticky fingers. I dated a few people, and he would literally, like, sa try to sabotage the relationships. Not intentionally, of course, but, like, he would, you know, be jealous and envious, and just, it really sucked. I, I, I definitely pulled this guy through the mill. Um, and so when I finally came upon this one relationship, when I was 16 years old, this was like almost two years later, um, he was not mutual friends with my, my <laughs> first ex. We'll just put it like that. He was not, um, tolerant of him hanging around or, you know, he didn't understand why he was still in love with me or anything like that. This person that I was dating, um, uh, we'll, we'll say presently, um, I'm not dating him now, obviously, but I mean at this time of the bullying horror story. Um, he was just kind of like a hothead, and he he did not like my friends. He was just, he was, honestly, that relationship went on way too long. We were all so together for about, oh gosh, nine months or so, I feel like, or something of the kind. We were together for a little bit. Anyway, freshman year, okay, sophomore year now, right? Um, homecoming rolls around and we, um, all get together and I tried to bring my, my current boyfriend, uh, around our group of friends that also my ex was, you know, also kind of friends with. And obviously freshman year when I was dating him, we went to homecoming. So obviously this kind of brought up a lot of bad memories, bad blood. <laughs> anyway, my ex, the one I dated in freshman year had a friend that I met, um, somewhere along the lines and he also developed this very serious crush on me and he also was very um uh he was just a I'm not gonna be horribly I'm not gonna say this like in a mean way but he was just not the best influence like my ex deserved better friends and he made him do things that I don't think that anybody would approve of. He just wasn't a good influence. But of course, I don't try to judge people. I'm I'm basically friends with whoever until you do me dirty. And that's just a fault of mine. I don't know why. <laughs> I really don't care who you are, what your background is. I will be friends with you until you give me a reason not to be. So I was friends with this person, but unfortunately, um, he, he took that to a whole new level, you know? And he would feed in and, and tell my ex, like, things and enrage him and make the situation so much worse. Well, as I was going to homecoming, um, my, my cousin will say, um, she's all mutual friends with everybody. Like my, my ex from freshman year, his friend, like they acquaintances, you know, it's a small community. We all know each other, that kind of thing. Um, and she invites my freshman year, uh, ex-boyfriend, my freshman year boyfriend to come to the bowling alley with us on homecoming night. 
And, like, mind you, I spent the entire day trying to, like, get cute and whatever. And I am in this dress. And I just, I can sense it. I can sense it. There is going to be some serious drama. There is going to be tempers of flair. There is going to be, you know, shit in the underwear. Like, it is going to be a hot mess. So in walks my freshman year boyfriend, his friend, who also is just a really bad influence. And, you know, I'm with my sophomore year boyfriend, right? And I am not trying to pay any attention to either of them because I already know the look on his face is like, oh, hell no. What are they doing here? And that's literally what he said to me. He's like, what are they doing here? I'm like, I did not invite them. It's not my doing. You know, I can't tell other people what to do. And he was already livid. At this point, you could just tell like there was temperatures arising up in there. Blazing lanes. Yeah, there was some blazing happening because people were getting pissed. All of a sudden, I get approached by my my freshman year boyfriend's friend and was like oh what you're too good to talk to us now I'm just trying to play it easy I'm not trying to have no problems happening here so anyways you know I'm thinking everything's okay everything's good everything's fine um but then all of a sudden you know you can feel that that uh, tension just rising they're giving my my current boyfriend dirty looks they're you know, saying things, and I can just tell, like, they have a really bad plan, like, something is going to go down, and, um, I'm not gonna like it (laughs) at all, so anyway, there's, like, a bunch of my friends here, right, and I'm, I'm kind of, like, an awkward duck, I'm not, like, the most popular person, so appearances to me are absolutely everything, like, what people think of me was everything at the time, not now, but at the time it was, um, I wanted to make a good impression, well, unfortunately for me, that went all out the window, I ended up, um, I ended up noticing that my ex and his friend were gone they were disappeared but you could still almost feel their presence lingering is that weird anyway my boyfriend at the time noticed it and was like where did they go he went to go check his car because if you knew one thing about my boyfriend at the time he was a car fanatic he was obsessed with his car his car was his baby whatever I think you know where I'm going with this story, (laughs) y'all. So anyway, we go outside. We look at the car. Everything's Gucci, whatever. We come back in. And so do they. They come back in. They're still mingling. Give me dirty looks, side eyes, the whole nine. Anyway, um, (laughs) it ends up being that we hear a car alarm going off in the parking lot. And my heart freaking sinks. My heart just drops to the damn floor. I already know what's going to happen. And my boyfriend at the time bolts. He leaves me there. (laughs) He was a douchebag. He bolts and he leaves me there. He goes out to the car and I issue not. All of a sudden you can see my freshman year boyfriend, his friend and his brother getting into the car and just speeding full fledged off of the, off of the lot. All of a sudden, you know, you can see my current boyfriend freaking out, cursing, hella upset. Rightfully so. His property has been destroyed. They had keyed his car. They had really keyed his car. And for what? For what? To get back at me because I was ignoring them? Like, I don't understand. Like, I wasn't ignoring them to be mean. I was ignoring the situation because I didn't want to make my current boyfriend pissed off or whatever. I just didn't want what happened to happen. And I thought by, you know, being nice and playing it cool, it was, I don't even know, (laughs) stupid. Anyway, I start crying. I'm hysterical. I'm upset. Well, my friends are rushing outside. They're like, who did this? And it basically came down to the fact that my boyfriend took off. He left me there. Freaking left me there. And believe it or not, you guys, my husband now (laughs) was there. Uh Bish, yes. (laughs) It's all good. I knew my husband. My husband was there with his friends. And he was like in the parking lot, hella instigating. Like, oh my God, we should go follow him. We should go see what's going on. Bish, I kid you not. All of a sudden, and we're mobbing. Fuck, you almost said it. Four cars deep, dude. Four or five cars deep. Um, and we're we're hauling butt back to back to the town where my freshman year boyfriend lived, and uh, my current boyfriend knew where his house was, and it ended up being this big thing where you know he ended up. It's so petty. Um, he ended up keying uh, my freshman boyfriend's car back, and there was just like this whole thing going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth between the two, and it's just really ironic to think to this day that. 
I met, well, I didn't meet my, my husband at that particular moment. I actually met him like before then, but it's just so ironic to me how many times I've had like these situations happen and my, my current husband was there and I would never think I would actually end up with him. So yeah, he was there during this whole entire situation. They went at it. They like were swearing at each other, cursing at each other, threatening to be each other's culito. And it all came down to supposedly, um, my my freshman year boyfriend did not key the car. It was the other person. And I honestly still to this day don't understand why he would do it, why he would create that kind of issue. I think my theory, correct me if I'm wrong, <laughs> is they were trying to have um, big enough tensions to rise to where we were going to break up. And it, there is more to the story. It ended up being... Um, I ended up getting a ride home and I was basically crying and just blabbering into my, my cousin's chest. I felt like such an idiot. And my boyfriend broke up with me temporarily, um, that night because apparently I was too, um, much of a risk to him to be in a relationship. I kid you not. So, you know, and then I was so naive and stupid and in love with somebody who honestly didn't deserve my love at all. <laughs> I begged for him to forgive me, even though I hadn't done anything wrong, right? Wrong place, wrong time, wrong, probably person to be with. He was probably right there. <laughs> um, and we ended up getting back together, right? Like this was, this was before we ended up breaking up for good, but, um, we were only together for a few months at this point. And a uh, long story short, two weeks later, <laughs> he was in the car, the same car and a kid, a little kid runs into him on his bike. I'm not even kidding. So I felt like I was uh, like the, the dark cloud, the series of misfortunate events that D bag and I no longer talk. He is the epitome of like scum. <laughs> he was very controlling very manipulative as you could probably hear by the story but moral of the story is I don't freaking have one <laughs> it's just one of those things at the bowling alley and every time the bowling alley is closed now but at the time I would always drive past that place and think of all the freaking jacked up crap that happened there I swear to you so maybe that's why I don't necessarily love bowling I just have bad vibes but anyway I hope you liked this messed up story time and if you did don't forget to go ahead and comment rate subscribe let me know what you guys think in the comments down below doesn't shine and I will see you all next time.